Hello guys and welcome to my channel, Blissfully Single Bean. Yes, I'm your homegirl Bean and I'm your Blissfully Single One. I'm coming to you with the Love and Marriage Huntsville Review from Memphis, Tennessee. I'm going to be out here for the next three days working. So I'm like, all right, I didn't get a chance to put up the Love and Huntsville Marriage Review this weekend. So I'm like, all right, well, I have a couple of hours before I go start my work day. Let me go ahead and do that. And it's so crazy too, because the pandemic is showing you how everything is changing. This is my second corporate event since the pandemic hit. I was at home for a year and a half and we're finally moving ahead with our events program. So it's like the way that things are changing is crazy. Um, this is the second hotel that I've been to that I wasn't able to order room service either. There's not enough staff. The, there's not enough food, the cook isn't here. So it's like, all right, fine. Now I gotta leave my damn room to find something to eat. Well, that's neither here nor there. Let's go on and get into this review. The episode was all right or whatever. And again, I'm not at home, so I don't have my notes. It's gonna be really quick. I'm just gonna talk about the points that were significant to me. Child, you know, when that episode came on, I was just waiting for the brunch scene because it seems like Tiffany is going to be designated the shit starter for this season. And as much as I do not like shit starting bitches, we need some spice in the mix, you know? Episode opens up, Letitia and Mel get together. Specifically, Mel calls Letitia to come over so that they can catch up because they're really working on a friendship. This scene was so forced. I'm sitting there looking at Melody, asking Letitia how things are going. And I'm like, Mel, you barely look like you can tolerate the woman still. It just kind of seemed like, all right, we're going to try, but we know that some shit's going to happen down the line. So I'm like, all right, child, whatever. I'm not buying it. So it's yet to be seen. But Mel did give Letitia some advice about marriage. You know, Letitia's having a hard time connecting with Marceau. And Mel did recommend you know, go see a therapist. A therapist will help, you know, help you all to see things differently, you know, or clearly. So, yeah, boom. That was that. Mar tells ass. <laughs> I just don't like him. <laughs> I just don't like him. I never will. He goes to visit his mother. And at the beginning of the scene, he's laying down some kind of powder. It's a snake deterrent. And it doesn't es escape the irony of the fact that Martel really is the one of the big biggest snakes out there. Ma'am, your son is a snake. You should be using that powder for his ass. You know what I mean? But yeah, a snake trying to keep the snakes out. That was not lost on me at all him and his mom catch up and really the significance of this scene is the mother she says she'll always love her son mel mel is always going to be my daughter-in-law no matter what and she also gives some real talk whatever's happening with you and mel is happening between you and mel that does not involve anyone else and i'm like that's that's real talk right there mama where me and mama start to go left is when mom uh, martel's mom said um listen Ain't nobody perfect. Ain't nobody perfect. We're all entitled to our mistakes. And I'm like, ma'am, there's, there's, there's two issues here. There's being human and there's falling short. Imperfection, that's one thing. Ma'am, your, your son may not have been perfect, but he was a shit ass husband to Melody. He was a disrespectful ass husband to Melody. And if Melody was smarter, she would have been divorced that man. So don't, don't conflate the issues, ma'am. Okay. There's Martel being imperfect. And then there's Martel being an absolute dick of a husband. Your son was a dick of a husband. Mm, okay. Black. The cigar bar is doing very well. Marceau is the boss. Marceau is coaching the staff at how to provide great customer service. And then Marceau has a conversation with Kimmy's son and basically telling Kimmy's son everything that he's doing wrong. And Kimmy's son was straight up with him. Kimmy's son said, listen, I have never done this before. What you need to do is get someone who is more experienced in managing an operation like a lounge or a restaurant so that I could be mentored by them because this is hard. And on top of that, you're not giving me any help. And Marcel's looking at the kid like, he don't know what the kid is talking about. But I was thinking to myself last season, didn't, didn't 
Letitia suggest that? Yes, she did. Letitia suggested she knew someone with experience running restaurants. How about you have that person come in and Kimmy's son could work under him. But of course, Marceau doesn't listen to anybody but himself. So yeah, that went out the window. Now, a year later or some months later, Kimmy's son is having difficulty running this whole operation thing by himself. But child, what was a key key for this scene right here is the way that Kimmy, first of all, Kimmy's son got a confessional. All right, black men. And the way he was throwing shade at the confessional, talking, calling Marceau all kinds of slick talks. Let me tell you, Kimmy's son read Marceau's ass in the confessional. That was, that, that was, that was quite amusing. <laughs> I live for that, honey. We need more confessionals out of you because yeah, Marceau is full of shit, Marceau. Martel and Mel's mommy, because the last time they saw each other on camera, it wasn't, it wasn't warm at all. There was no love lost there. So they want to get things out in the open. And I have to say, Mel's mom is just beautiful. She's beautiful without a stitch of makeup. If Mel gains a lot of weight, she'll look like her mom. Like they, they look so much alike to me. But Mel's mom is beautiful. I cannot, I, she, they come from good stock. Mel, her mama, these are, these are good looking people, child. Martel. I seen the picture of that other woman and I still don't know what the hell was in your head because to me, Mel's got that chick, both in body and face, but that's only my opinion. And that could be because I'm team Mel, team Mel all day. Martel and Mel's mama, they meet up at the park and they, you know, they're hashing things out. You're looking at Martel and Martel looks like he's receiving and he's understanding where she's coming from. She's talking about how hurt she was. He put up a post about Mel's mom keeping Martel from the kids. She said, do you know how hurt I was by that? I didn't do that. You call me names, A, B, C, all of that hurt. Martel looks like he's in a place of understanding, but again, Martel cannot open his mouth without it going left. Here's the thing. It's the disrespect. It's the disrespect. He's throwing out the disrespect word to Mel's mom as if the disrespect is what caused him to cheat. No, Martel, take accountability for your narcissistic behavior. Because even Mel's mom said one time is a mistake, but you con consciously kept going back to the same woman over and over and over again. That has nothing to do with Mel's disrespect. That has to do with you want the nice trophy wife, but you want your dick sucked at will. And it doesn't really work that like that when you're married. So anyway, they got to a good place. So we see how, we'll see how their relationship progressed. But at the end of the day, as messy as this whole situation is, and this is the point that Mel's mom drove home, as messy as the situation is, you've got these kids you've got to work through. You know, we're not family anymore in the traditional sense of the word, but we have to be a team for the children. And I was feeling that, Mama Mel. Yes, Mama Mel. I follow her on Instagrams too. By the way, follow me on Instagram. You can follow me at Beans for Easy or I blissfully single bean, pick either or. Beans for Reese is more of my personal stuff and blissfully single bean is for my blog so that I'm not bugging my family with blog posts and things like that. But child, anyway, I digress. We get to the brunch. So Destiny's having a birthday brunch and let me tell you, Destiny looks so damn good. I'm like, how old is Destiny's baby? Destiny's got some good bounce back. She's nice and thick and curvy. She looks good. And then Mel comes in looking equally as good and then their dresses have the same color hue to it. And Mel's like, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at us. Mel says, look at this. We have our revenge dresses on. I Look at us. I don't know what they were thinking. And I'm looking at Mel and Destiny like, I, I don't know, I don't know what they were thinking either, but it shows the complexities of relationships. It takes more than just looking good, you know, to make things work, child. But that's a bigger conversation for another review. Say so they all get together, Destiny's friends come in, Kimmy comes in, they have their back and forth banter. Something comes up about Jalen, Kimmy's son, and come to find out Jalen has a crush on 
Destiny. So when Destiny mentions Jalen's name, Destiny does one of these. She flips her hair. Kimmy's like, no, don't be flipping your hair when you talk with my son. Because you already know what the situation is. And yes, I would have felt some kind of way. <laughs> don't flip your hair when you're talking about my son. Because child, I don't know about y'all, but I got two of the most handsome boys in all of New York State. I ain't say New York City. I said New York State. My sons are fine. So of course I'm going to be protective of them. Anyway, they get a good kiki off of that. Here comes Miss Tiffany. Tiffany introduces herself to the group. We find out a little bit about Tiffany. Tiffany is, has a blended family. She comes with, in with the son and her new husband comes in with the son. They've been married for one year, not long. But my thing is you've only mar been married for one year and you guys are in reality TV. Yeah, that could be, uh, mm, that could be a little bit of shaky ground. Stronger marriages, 10 plus years marriages, 20 plus years marriages have ended under the extreme scrutiny of reality TV. So I'm really quite surprised that they would want to endeavor. But child, that's not my marriage. So why am I talking? Tiffany comes in, we're talking niceties and Timmy's talking to Kimmy and come to find out they have a connection through Monster. Now Monster is Kimmy's husband, Maurice's son. That's a mouthful, right? So Tiffany just all randomly says, was it was he? I heard he was vaping in the bathroom. And Kimmy said, say, say what now, who? Monster. Kimmy said, oh, what? I said to myself, for you to come in, you're new to this group of women, and you drop these bones, you're carrying these bones already. To me, that was random. And to me, Tiffany's really trying hard, trying hard to be that bitch, to be that charade to be that bone carrier, to be that Ashley. Shout out to the Housewives of Potomac. I'm like, girl, can you slow down a little bit and just ease your way into it? So now Kimmy's in her feelings because Maurice didn't tell her that, you know, Monster out there vaping in bathrooms and shit. You know, she, she wasn't aware of that. So I'm looking at Tiffany like, Tiffany, we need the messy energy, but I don't like you just based off of that. So Tiffany goes one step further. Tiffany explains that Destiny's ex husband won an award and she approached destiny and said oh girl you your dress yesterday looks so cute and destiny said to her that wasn't me you saw yesterday so everybody's like oops oops mel says uh, destiny d does he does your ex have a business partner i said nice try mel but no destiny was already in her feelings Destiny gets up from the table and walks off. And in, in Tiffany's confessional, Tiffany says, oh, I don't understand why she got so upset. It, it, it really wasn't that serious. But girl, it's your party and I'll let you cry if you want to. Bitch, are you really serious? Are you serious? You really don't understand why this woman got in her feelings. The woman is fresh off of a divorce and you're dropping, you're, 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 you're spraying the tea that he was dealing with other women. Child, who said she wanted that information all the way out there? Destiny as it already seems, is guarded. Because Mel has an issue with Destiny not coming to her, not opening up to her. And I understand where Mel is coming from, but I still think at the end of the day, Mel is being really too pushy because people deal with things they want to, the, the way they want to deal with it. Melly was in her feelings because um, uh, Destiny was feeling down about everything. Why didn't you reach out to me? And Mel says in her confessional, she needs to approach Destiny because of that. No, you don't. No, you don't, Mel. As much as I like you, let that woman work through whatever she needs to work through. All right? But good episode. Uh, it was all right. The best part was the messy brunch with Tiffany. So it's going to be interesting to see how Tiffany moves forward with the women. Is she still going to be that pot stirrer? Or is she going to find common ground and gel nicely into the group? We always need a pot stirrer, but right now she's not a likable one. That is it. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're watching this and you're from the Memphis area, please let me know some good food that I can eat the next couple of days. I'd very much appreciate it. All right, guys. Peace. Until next review. Bye-bye.